Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm David with Softron. Now you might've seen the video I did on the features of master control. Now, if you haven't seen that, make sure you go watch that video because I'm gonna be referring to a lot of things in that. And frankly, I don't think this video will make much sense to you if you haven't seen that. So going forward, I wanna talk about the remote control option because that was the one thing I didn't cover in the original video. And I didn't because there's a lot more going on inside of remote control. So let's start really from the beginning and that's the media browser. Before we set the media browser to catalog and use the local media browser. But the question becomes then what if I have multiple channels that need to use that clip's information? I don't wanna mark the same in and out point on the same clip uh, for five different channels. That's just not an efficient way of doing it. So the first thing we're gonna do is share the media browser's information. So here I am at the main channel we already set up and I'm gonna to go to HTTP server. I'm gonna make sure that it's checked for enable remote control. I'm gonna set the server name and of course make sure the port number is still the same. And then here is require authentication. So this is where I can build the users I want. So I've made an admin admin and you can imagine that the password is pretty easy to guess at this point but I've set up a full access. So on my second channel that I'm setting up, I'm actually gonna to go to on air video and remote control. In this window, we can add the other channel that has the media browser info. When clicking the plus, we'll see the names that are available on the local network. I'm gonna add by address on mine. Okay, so with that added, we can click the connect button and we get the different types of connections. So I can use media browser only, which is what I'm gonna use here. Choosing these other options mean I want to then control or observe the playback on the machine I'm talking to. That's not what I want. I just want its information. I'm gonna log in with my username I set and save the keychain and connect. So right now we're getting that media browser information. The other thing I'm gonna do is in settings, I'm going to set my default to that channel I just made. So every playlist that opens knows this is the media browser to use. So now I can go to media browser, select my channel, and all my information is there. So that means we can have one channel where all the in and out points live, but it's going to share that dynamically to all of its clients. It's not just from one channel to those clients, those clients can also send back information. For example, if you have one commercial that's already marked wrong, you can fix it and it's gonna be fixed for all the channels. In certain situations, you might want one machine that's acting as the dubber. So it is the one cataloging all the information and then sharing it to all the channels. In this case, the clients then become the actual output channel. This makes it very simple to say Dubber is media catalog, and here's all the clients that are playing the actual information. Again, connected to a storage system, like a network attached storage, where we're then sharing all that information across the media browsers, and it's all working back and forth. Now I've said this before, but this model comes in handy because it doesn't make it where you need a primary and secondary of every channel. Any machine can become any channel. You just need to open up the playlist, which can reside on the network storage, and the files are already there. So once you open up that playlist, it's gonna have all the commands for the playout you want. So that answers how we can be more efficient and share the information from one channel to the next. But now let's talk about actually remote controlling a playback channel. Just as a refresher, again, it's the dubber on one machine, then we have the playout on a second machine. Now I wanna add a third machine that's gonna remote control not only the playback channel we set up, but multiple playback channels. So I've jumped over to my playback channel and you see I have a playlist open and I have that media browser open. So I'm gonna go over to settings and we're gonna set up the remote control again. So I've enabled remote control, I have authentication. And so again, the same thing, I can set up different levels of access. You can see I set the server name to main program. So that's what we're gonna be looking for. And once that's set, now I can control it remotely. So now I'm on the machine that's gonna be used to remotely control the on-the-air videos. So I have my remote control window open. Again, that's in remote control under the toolbar. And I'm gonna hit the plus button. And this time I'm gonna use the address since it shows up there and we already set it. 
So I've added that main program. And now when I click connect, again, I have those two different playback modes, observe and control. So observe is good for someone like a control room who needs to see where they're at, but not actually control it. So we're of course going for control. And immediately we have the playlist. And of course I can even see the media browser. I have the ability to add media from the media browser right into the playlist. I can still replace items in the playlist as well. I still have all the abilities to add a clock start if I need to. So I'm getting all the information I would need as a remote operator to control this whole playlist. It's also important to know that all the changes I just made are saved in the logs of the playout channel. So we can track all the changes and we can see if there's an issue. So when you have these remote instances that are connecting to the on-the-air video playout, what's amazing is it doesn't need to be one channel that they're connecting to. The remote client can have several on-the-air videos open and they can all be on different machines and different places. Okay, so I'm back at my remote machine, my remote computer, so you can see that I have added two more channels. I'm gonna to connect to those. And you can see we have the playlist. And you can also see that we have the title that's coming from the uh, machine, uh, but I can also change the colors really easily. So you can see it makes it obvious for operators to know which channel they're currently controlling. Now you can also see on this one, we actually have two playlists. So those two playlists are open on that playout channel and I can see which one is currently playing, uh, but I can go to it. So that's really good if you have a secondary log for the day. Okay, another thing that's possible with the remote control is I can go to window, gang playback control. And so now if you look at all these playlists, I can take them all and advance them. That is definitely helpful for network affiliates. For instance, if you are in a network event, like a sporting event, they're gonna to go to the commercial at the same time, no matter what time zone you're in. So you can gang all those channels together and advance them. So all the features of master control, and of course all the remote control features, all bundled together inside of this traffic option, uh, make it a really great choice for a lot of TV stations uh, around the world and definitely around the US. So if you have more questions about it, make sure to go to softron.tv and you can always message us there or call us. Thanks for watching.